recipe. <laughs> okay, whenever you're ready. Okay. Sarah? Sure. Um, good afternoon. Today is December 20th, 2004. My name is Sarah Weisbun. Today I'm interviewing Joyce Griffin at Hudson Falls High School. Thanks for coming. Um, first, uh, I'd like to ask you, what is your uh, place and date of birth? <laughs> it's Helsby, H-E-L-S-B-Y, in the county of Cheshire. Mm -hmm. And what else did you ask me? The date that? of birth, yep. October 6, 22. Do you have any siblings? I have one sister who lives in Connecticut. Did she ever enter into the service? No, she was um, restricted because she worked uh, for a transportation company. Mm -hmm. So you were the only one? Yeah. Did your father ever enter into the service, or? Not in World War II. He mm -hmm. was a um, naval officer in uh, World War I, mm -hmm. in the British Navy. Right. Um, were you able to finish high school? Yes. Yep. Um, what did your family feel about you entering into the auxiliary territorial service? They didn't object to it. My father had, I wanted to go into the, what they called the land arm, mm -hmm. where you were assigned to farms and so forth, and, you know, my interest in nature, but my father didn't think that was appropriate for a young lady, so, and you were, had to be checked out by your own doctor mm -hmm. for the land arm, rather than the military doctors. And, uh, so he beat me to my doctor, and we had a discussion, and I was turned down. <laughs> so then, of course, I'm conscript. I was conscripted into the one of the services, and at that time, it was just the army that uh, had opened. Mm -hmm. What age did you enter? Oh, nineteen. <laughs> nineteen. At age nineteen, you were conscripted. Mm -hmm. Um, what did you do while you were in the Auxiliary Territorial Service? Well, it was actually, I went in as a shorthand typist secretary, and um, I wound up being on a battery of men <laughs> for a unit that was um, experimenting the rockets in those days. <laughs> And it was a highly secret place because of rockets on the right. in those days. And um, I worked with them. We used to, um, we would freeze some of the rockets to see how they would fire um, at low temperature and then heat some to see how they would um, fire in hot countries. Mm -hmm. You'd fire them over the uh, Cardigan Bay, which is part of the Irish Channel. How are you chosen to become a part of this battery? I don't know, really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I think I perhaps do, in retrospect. I was a secretary to a naval commander. Um, and he was getting rather old, and he probably was face out. Mm -hmm. um, no placement and I had to replace a civilian. In this job, testing mm -hmm. the rockets? Yeah. Did, were you treated any differently because you were the only woman in this pattern? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no? No. No. Alright, good luck! Was there anything else that this, uh, you had to do during this job? Well, I was also the physical education instructor. Mm -hmm. for the were there a lot of people where you were? Mm -hmm. Or you said it was secret, so yeah. were there? Well, there were different phases of it. There was a unit of act -act girls. I don't know what mm -hmm. they did. Mm -hmm. Everyone was secret from the other. And uh, batteries of men, too, soldiers at each place. Was it, this was in England? In South Wales. South Wales. Aberforth. You see that on a little map mm -hmm. I have, South Wales. Mm -hmm. 
Um, is there anything you especially liked or disliked about your job? No, I didn't dislike anything about it. It was <laughs> quite fun. Because I used to be able to go up on the lookout on the roof of the building with the captain of the unit and we would have stopwatch. Mm -hmm. And um, stopwatch the explosion of the rocket in the air, all the splash in the sea, or whatever they were looking for. Interesting. And then I'd have to compile the two results. And sometimes there were visiting offices from other countries, too. Mm -hmm. How long did you test the rockets? Three years. Three years. Mm -hmm. Did you ever get to leave um, South Wales while you were doing this, or you, you no, lived there? No, go on leave. You could go on leave. But as you said, it was top secret, so you, could you not reveal anything you were doing? or? Didn't talk about it enough. Um, no. Okay. <laughs> um, what are some of your most memorable memorable experiences from the war? Well, I think number one is that I met my husband. <laughs> he was with an American company who was stationed not too many miles from where we were, and they were sort of experimenting with the same idea, mm -hmm. uh, but rockets from tanks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, at the end of the war, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. How so? Oh, celebrations. And of course, I had to remember church. It mm -hmm. really kept everyone's spirit up, mm -hmm. just to hear his voices, his thing. Did you ever see him? No. No? Just heard him? No. Mm -hmm. When, during the war, did you meet your husband? It was in the 19th. The Americans didn't come until 42, I think. Was it 43? Okay. I met John in 43. Mm -hmm. And, um, funny story the way I met him. Mm -hmm. This unit was putting on a, a little show for the local people, mm -hmm. and I was invited, and um, I, didn't, I didn't really get to know him at that time, but he was, this part in it was up on the stage, with the top hat and cane, <laughs> singing Who Threw the Overalls and Mrs. Murphy's Chowder. <laughs> That must have been fun. Oh, yeah. And um, then I, I met him, if not two others, and we had a, um, a service person's canteen there mm -hmm. in the town of Cardigan. And we um, started going out, and then we became engaged before he went back to Europe. He um, became over on uh, marriage leave some months later. Mm -hmm. the following February, and uh, of course he couldn't get in to the establishment. Right. But I got up there and was shocked to see him. He was <laughs> here on marriage leave and not a bit prepared. <laughs> My poor mother had a hard time gathering up stuff and mm -hmm. renting so strictly rationed. Right. Food and clothing, but he managed to beg and borrow and Maybe steal, I don't know. <laughs> uh, enough to have a wedding. <coughs> of course, his parents didn't approve, and neither did mine. They thought we should wait till the end of the war, but right. you never know what's going to happen. Right. And his parents were back in the United yeah. States? Mm -hmm. But did they he? were in contact with Oh, they, they knew. They wrote to mm -hmm. and said, yeah. Which his father, when he was leaving the States for Europe, had told him, don't be bringing home any of those lines. <laughs> of course he did. He did. He told me his life souvenir. Oh. <laughs> um, what was it like being a war bride? A little scary from the reports we were getting. That, um, 
the American people were against us because we were taking up space that the mm -hmm. soldiers coming home should have. Mm -hmm. And we uh, were told they were having to sleep on park benches because of us. <coughs> <laughs> so it was uh, not too great in New York. Mm -hmm. So I said, I want to get out of here. I don't like this place. So I came back, went back to Connecticut so mm -hmm. the next day. Is that where he grew up? Connecticut. Connecticut? Mm -hmm. Did any of your um, friends from England treat you any differently because you married an American? Or had they as well? Oh, no, 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 not my friends. And my sister had a falling out with the local vicar because he was against it. Mm -hmm. Saying things about the American soldiers. Mm -hmm. My sister was in the church youth, stood up and said, um, that's my sister is married to me. Mm -hmm. But I wish we would not talk that way. And she never went back to the youth center. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, there were, there were reservations about it. But some had horror stories in the prize. Mm -hmm. I was lucky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you heard about all these things before you went to the United States? About what? How you would be treated once you got there? We were warned. Yeah. Yes, we were warned. But there were mixed feelings about it. Mm -hmm. um, did you and your husband travel back to the United States together? No. He was sent back from a German army hospital mm -hmm. because he had developed an allergy while he was in Belgium. They didn't know what it was, and they shipped him to Paris to the army hospital there, where he was stationed. And uh, it all turned out to be a little stray dog because mm. uh, he had asthma. You know. But he was assigned to this group of what they call French prisoners, mm -hmm. those that have Nazi mm -hmm. leanings. Right. Of course, he didn't speak French, <laughs> they didn't speak English, and they worked on an x-ray machine. And he was testing it out and leaned against it with his knee and with his hand, okay. not knowing that the current was on. Oh. He got x-ray burned. Oh, wow. So he was finally shipped back to the United States for treatment for the rest of the year. He was in Army Hospital for a year. Mm -hmm. A year after I came here, matter of fact. So, um, oh, I came, he came back in, in November of 45. I came here in April of 46. Mm -hmm. How did you? Come here, that ship? Yes, it was a Red Cross ship. Mm -hmm. The Willem H. Holbrook. I never forget that. <laughs> it was full of brides and babies. Oh, of American soldiers? Yeah. It was a very rough crossing, and uh, a lot of the, the Red Cross nurses and the mothers of the babies which were ill. So we who were able to keep standing were called in. Ooh. Walking into that nursery in the morning. It was oh, awful. I bet. Because the babies were sick too. So. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, and he met me, John met me at New York on crutches. Oh. And you only stayed there one day? Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, where were you when the bombing of London occurred? I was in South Wales, mostly. Uh, it started, though, before I went in the army. Mm -hmm. And my mother and my sister and I used to sleep under the stairs every night. Really? And we'd hear the hum of the German planes coming. They had a distinctive sound. And uh, we'd sleep underneath the stairs. I don't know how my poor mother ever slept, because there wasn't that much room for mm -hmm. three hours. Mm -hmm. My father worked nights then. Mm -hmm. So, um, but we survived. We didn't have too many bombs around us. We killed a few cows, and they killed a few cows, mm -hmm. and we made a few craters around, but 
It was scary, though, because you just sort of get the impression that your name's on that arm that's coming. Right. So, uh, but London, I was not in London, but I was in Liverpool when it was a bad raid. Mm -hmm. We were two stories underground. And we were fine. I came out in the morning. The street, the stores that had been bombed, the goods are all over the streets, and you'd hear people calling for help and been buried. And, mm, it was a horrible experience. Mm -hmm. mm. Were you with your family in Liverpool? No. no. I was with uh, a friend, actually. That was before I was in the army, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Before you we were probably just visiting and shopping. Mm -hmm. um, was the bombing of Pearl Harbor a big deal to the British people? No, I don't really think so. No. Just like the bombing in London didn't right. mean much to people right. here because it was so far away when Pearl Harbor was the same story. Mm -hmm. Do you remember where you were when you heard about that the Japanese had bombed the Americans? Let's see, that was July. What year? I don't remember. You don't the year. remember where you were? The year. Oh. Um, 24th Was it 24th? Yeah. Were you well, in? We were still you at war then with Germany. Mm -hmm. Right. Was it um, talked about much or just uh, no. passing by? We were still going through it there in, um, in England, you know. Mm -hmm. We talked of invasion and so forth. And, uh, we were battling over there. We had landed, you know, on the beaches. And, we were more interested in mm -hmm. um, How do you feel about the war? And why? Just in, back when it was occurring, how did you feel about it? Well, it was alarming because we didn't know if we were going to be overrun at any time. Mm -hmm. And the bombs kept falling. Guns going all the time, shooting at the German planes, and and um, we witnessed a few Spitfire fights in the sky. Mm -hmm. Those were marvelous missions. Mm -hmm. Spitfires there, but oops, don't say. it wasn't a good feeling. But we were at war. It's kind of scary at times. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel about the Germans today? Oh, gosh. That was then and this is now. Mm -hmm. I just have more bad feelings about Germany. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the German people. Right. It was the Nazism that we were against. Why do you think it, um, it was that England and the rest of Europe didn't know about the Holocaust for so long? I don't know. That it still disturbs me. Mm -hmm. It really does that we didn't know what was going on. Mm -hmm. It's a horror. Do you remember when you found out about the camps? No, not really. I know that my my husband was uh, responsible for the, a bunch that released some of the, uh, one of the camps anyway. Mm -hmm. I don't remember whether that was in the Netherlands or Belgium. Mm -hmm. Should have paid more attention at the time. Uh, mm -hmm. You just go along with whatever's happening. Right. Um, nothing you can do about it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, 
Do you see World War II as a defining moment in your life? Well, yes. Of course, uh, I had met my husband, of course, and uh, brought people closer together. Mm -hmm. You know, there's more sharing and caring, and we had strict rationing. But I was in South Wales, so I wasn't on top of the, the disturbances in London and the, um, the invasion. Mm -hmm. Was it difficult to um, ration and during the war? The yeah, families it was very strict. Very strict. We had like two ounces of butter. Mm -hmm. Two ounces of margarine, four ounces of cheese, everything was rationed like that. Very difficult. We, I was lucky because I was raised on a poultry farm, so we had all those supplies. And even though I didn't like any of those products, mm -hmm. still don't, mm -hmm. um, we could exchange black market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That occurred often? Oh, yeah. Um, were there any, I see here that um, one of your memorable experiences was um, on D-Day, you raided all the local pubs. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, we were free to do that. Oh, mm -hmm. a great time. Such a glorious moment in the world, but the war was over. Mm -hmm. Yeah dancing in the streets and <laughs> mayhem. <laughs> How did you um, hear the news that the war was officially over? See, I have to think about that. Mm -hmm. I think Churchill announced it on the radio. Mm -hmm. And you're all listening? Yeah, I guess we were called to a radio or to gather around the radio so we could hear his speech. Mm -hmm. Really, he was such a great man. We really held the country together, really, mm -hmm. just to hear his voice. That's important. Yeah. Um, uh, what ways did the war change any of your activities or your habits? Home. Mm -hmm. um, habits. I don't think we changed any habits. Gosh. I can't think of any habits that we've changed. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. I during the war, what did you do for entertainment? Well, we had uh, movies, mm -hmm. uh, dances. We always had dances in various little areas around. Um, and to transport, we would have army transport to take us there. Um, we had church parade. If you wanted to go. Nothing much else, just mm -hmm. meeting in the, uh, the local servicemen's um, building mm -hmm. in a place called Cardigan. And, um, very good serving tea, mostly tea, mm -hmm. and uh, sandwiches, and the, the nasty people they call them. I don't know what it means. 
think it would be something like the Red Cross serving the food service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have music there and dancing. Just get together. Mm -hmm. And you met your husband while you were at a at the pub. service meets. Mm -hmm. No, not a pub. No. Um, the service meets club. Mm -hmm. Were you able to go there often? Only when transportation would take us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At least once a week. Mm -hmm. Was it far from where you were? Mm -hmm. But we were only like 10 miles, 12 miles, something like that, from the town of Cardigan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There wasn't much there to do. They did have a movie theater mm -hmm. and a lot of pubs. <laughs> <laughs> How often did you, were you able to see your family during the war? Well, we'd have a leave that we so often, every six months or something. Mm -hmm. My mother and my sister came down to visit her. Mm -hmm. Stayed down in the car. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'd we'd be given transportation home, usually by train. Spend time at home. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever visit London during the war? Not doing the war, no, it was just after the war. I was mm -hmm. there on my honeymoon. Oh, <laughs> and it was just after the war, so yeah. were people still celebrating as much? Mm, no, not as much then. This was several months later. Mm -hmm. There was still a lot of rationing mm -hmm. of food. And you go into a restaurant, and one of the main meals would be baked beans on toast. Oh, really? Or mm. sardines on toast. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we just had a few days there, and then we had to leave to go back to Europe, and I had to leave to go back to South Wales. Mm -hmm. um, how long after the war ended did you go to the United States? After the war ended. About ten months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how was life different after the war ended before you went to the United States? Just resumed. We had our dances and our entertainments. And, mm -hmm. and I worked while I waited. Worked in an educational library. Mm -hmm. They used to package boxes of books at this library to send out to all the different county schools mm -hmm. that couldn't come into the library. I enjoyed it. <coughs> And after the war, you went back home with your family. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Was your husband ever able to visit you at your home? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was there before our wedding. He was there for our wedding. But we did out the wedding. He beat at the wedding. Oh, really? <laughs> Go into the local town where we were going to be married and get a room. Mm -hmm. um, and then he came home on leave. Went somewhere around the August. Oh, I think he was home for my birthday in October of 45. in November, and I went the following April. Mm -hmm. um, are there any additional wartime experiences you'd like to share? <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, of course, the boys liked 
the pubs there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wasn't there, but uh, my brother-in-law, while my husband was visiting me, my brother-in-law, who married my sister, mm -hmm. here, came, she came over after me. Oh, she married. was a wartime guide as well? No. He, he was back here, discharged. Oh, really? And she followed me two years after I came here. My husband introduced her to his oh. army buddy. Mm -hmm. and, but he and some other buddies were on a drunken spree <laughs> in one of the little villages down there. And, uh, I don't know what they did that was wrong, but they had some lanterns knocking where there was construction going on. Mm -hmm. and they were running away from the cops. <laughs> picked up one of these lanterns and were running with it so the cops could follow them wherever they went. <laughs> oh, that was Tony, Uncle Tony. And uh, when they decided to take a swim in their underwear, and they got booted out for that. <laughs> oh, they were in the gay old time. It was the drink that did it. <laughs> celebrating. Mm. So, um, How far from your home was where you had to work during the war? Was it a long distance? Where I was stationed? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm. From Cheshire in England all the way down to South Wales, quite a long way mm -hmm. to go back to England. Mm -hmm. That's how I traveled back and forth. Yeah. Well, I thank you for coming. I don't know. I wish I could remember more, but this old <laughs> brain is getting real rusty. Oh, you did a good job. Yes. Thanks. How old are you now? 82. Oh, you're doing great. <laughs> Why, thanks. Well, love to look at your things from the war. We'll have to look at those. Okay. Your pictures. Think that's right. it. Mm -hmm. What time is it? I know you have to get that going. No, I just have to be back here this, well, at home, so Mikey can call me at about 5 15 because you don't need a right hand. He's resting. <laughs> We've done the post office. Yeah, we're fine. Okay. Do you want to look at some pictures? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can see that out there. Yeah, bring them here. I'll let the camera run. I guess my granddaughter was quite surprised yeah. that you knew who she was. Oh, did you know? I yes. saw her today. Cody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just saw her leaving for work. <laughs> well, she brought in the survey last year that you completed for me. Uh, yes, she did. Uh, yeah. They were down at my apartment and uh, Dan. Yeah, O'Neill. O'Neill. He was doing that. And he right, because I had him last year. Oh. I never had Cody as a student. Oh. So she probably didn't know that I knew who she was. <clears throat> Well, she is just a junior. Right. Mm. She's a very good girl. Yeah. Works very hard at everything. Like when uh, the Germans surrendered, I don't know. Tell me about this. The Victory Diary. Mm -hmm. Well, it's kind of self-explanatory. Read it. <laughs> it was the it says the crowded events of a tremendous week. So it, was this the week that the um, uh, the yeah the victory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So evidently it happened last <coughs> Monday. Monday. Read Monday, May seventh. Oh. That day that victory was announced. Do you know? May seventh sounds yeah. right. Because mm -hmm. May eighth was VE day. Yep. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So this just, oh, this and it has different times of when mm -hmm. events happen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did they have lots of these kind of things in the in the papers? They probably did. I'm amazed that I still have it. Mm -hmm. Pretty fragile, but...
Nine. Never. Let's see, this is where I was stationed, where it says Abbott Is that mm -hmm. Abbott Right here. And leave the up on the cliffs up here. Mm -hmm. And fire out over there. Mm -hmm. I would see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I would see the Carly the May. That part of the Irish Sea. Mm -hmm. And that's. And then there's Cardigan, is that here? Mm hmm Cardigan Island, it says. Where I was, uh, of which I'm speaking. Mm -hmm. Where I met my husband, and where mm -hmm. we met for entertainment. Mm -hmm. And uh, then this is South Wales, and it goes up into North Wales, and then up into Cheshire, where I lived. Mm -hmm. so it's oh, it is a great distance, way. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this, what? Tell me what this is. Oh, you have to have that to get paid. Mm hmm. And, uh, and what they took out of there. It was a cool for actually, by the time it ended. But, uh, mm -hmm. There's a recommendation somewhere. And you were, you served um, in, uh, for the British until the end of the war? Mm -hmm. Right to the end? Yep, I was still in the army when they announced it actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. Still in the same place. You're at your station when you yep, found out? Yep. Mm -hmm. I was in a South Wales regiment. Mm -hmm. We had a Welsh dragon as our insignia. Mm -hmm. And I wore cross swords, meaning I was a Zen instructor. Mm -hmm. um, I had them one time, I don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. Couldn't find me. Did you keep your uniform after? Mm, no, I came over here and then went later, years later, my husband and father came over. And she disposed of it all. She <laughs> loved stuff of mine. She had no sentiment for oh. that stuff. So, and the celebrations. The celebrations, yeah, the way we were. Like crazy, the whole country did. Very uplifting. Mm. Hard to believe that we were finally free of. Here. We're dancing in the street. <laughs> we danced all year. Here's a picture of the royal family. It says, Oh, with Winston. Winston. Yeah. And look at the queen. Present queen, how mm -hmm. young she was. Very young. She was in the army too. Yes. She was. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. It looks like she might be in her uniform yeah, right here. I think so. I haven't got my magnifier on. Yep. I can't see what I would try to Yep. Mm -hmm. And it says here, times were still hard, however, and the long ration queues remained. Yeah, People I stood in those lines too. In those days, uh, before I went to the army anyway, I, I smoked. And stand, you'd hear that a store got a shipment of cigarettes and then there would be nearly five packs. You'd stand in line for hours and try to get five cigarettes. Mm. That's such a horrible habit. I'm glad I don't do it anymore. This just says, General MacArthur accepts the Japanese surrender. Oh. Now, oh, and here's a picture of Field Marshal Montgomery mm -hmm. accepts the German surrender. Oh, well, you've got that. It's May 5th. Do we need to get pictures of that? Yeah, <coughs> we'd like to get copies. Yeah. What did you think about Montgomery? Field Marshal Montgomery? Is that popular? Well, we thought it was pretty great, yeah. We didn't know a lot of, uh, about him, really. 
but uh, we felt he was a savior in many ways, yeah. Along with Winston. Mm -hmm. Oh, pictures. When did you get those pictures? Uh, I've had Mm -hmm. Actually, I have bigger one, like 8 by 10, so I'm going to Oh, you don't see my insignia. Mm -hmm. um, I have a different, my larger one is a different picture. Mm -hmm. This one was taken in Paris. Look at that. Both 1944. Yeah. <laughs> what did he do, your husband? He, he uh, worked with tanks. And um, I could belong to the Tank Turner Elvis Club. Yeah. <laughs> they had a little club there they called the, the Tank Turner Elvis Club. <laughs> and he was rescued by his buddy. Um, but they were trying to figure out how to shoot rockets from a, a tank. Wow. Yeah. That's why we were in the same area studying those rockets. So did he <coughs> go over in the invasion? No, they had sent him back to Paris Hospital um, because he had such allergies. And they put him to work, as I explained, with these French quizlings, oh. um, repairing uh, hospital equipment. So he got his x-ray burns because they got cross signals and didn't know that the power, the, the power was on on an x-ray machine. Mm -hmm. And he was checking it to see what they'd done. Leaned on it with his knee and his hand and got x-ray burned in the hospital for over a year. And it was pretty bad. But, but So they shipped him back in the United States was skin grafting. And so he was back here when the war ended. Didn't you go to one of the concentration camps? Yeah, when he was in that, in a group that released some uh, prisoners from the concentration camp. I can't remember the name of it. Hmm. Thank you very much for coming. You're welcome. Can I get copies of this? I already got copies of this. Can you get copies of that? No, I'm getting pictures of that. Okay. You can keep it to get the pictures in there. Oh, we'll let you do that. They can take pictures. Oh, now? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Mm. This is cool. Okay. <clears throat> Does she, how old is the queen now?